The U.S. Department of Agriculture's Dietary Guidelines for Americans recommend dairy consumption as part of a healthy diet. For adults, the recommendation is about three cups per day of dairy. Now, why has milk been pushed so heavily into our diets, and what's the real impact of this? Let's find out. Now, welcome back this week. Even though dairy products are often incorporated into Western cuisine, it was not always a staple item. But in the recent decades, milk has been marketed as an essential part of our diet, essential for strong bones and healthy bodies. But where did this belief originate, and who benefits from it? The push started early in the 20th century with entities like the Dairy Council forming to promote milk as a nutritional necessity. Now, this was supported by government programs, especially during the Great Depression and later through school milk programs. Now, governments worldwide, including the U.S., U.K., and Canada, have long recommended dairy as a key part of our diet. This recommendation is based on the belief that it is a prime source of calcium and vitamin D. Now, the U.K. and Canada stated. Dairy are good source of protein and vitamins, and they emphasize choosing lower fat and lower sugar options. The USDA is much more specific. They stated adults and children who need 2,000 calories daily should eat or drink about three cups of dairy each day. Now it could be a cup of milk with your breakfast cereal, a cup of low-fat plain yogurt, and a slice of cheese. Now these recommendations are typically based on providing adequate intakes of essential nutrients that dairy products are rich in, such as. Calcium and vitamin D. But let's unpack that. Now, yes, cow's milk does contain these important nutrients, but so do many plant-based foods and fortified alternatives: almond milk, soy milk, leafy greens, and beans, just to name a few. The dairy farmers of Canada. Quotes studies claiming the calcium added to plant-based beverages tend to settle at the bottom of the container, even when shaken vigorously. Now, on the other hand, cow's milk's calcium is dispersed evenly and easier for the body to absorb. However, at least one study showed that. Calcium in supplements taken by mouth is absorbed into the body equally well as calcium absorption from milk. A 2023 study analyzed over 200 plant-based milk products and found that only about 12% of these plant-based milk on the market had calcium, vitamin D, and protein content comparable or greater than that found in cow's milk. The fortification levels tend to be like dairy milk. But the medium protein content was significantly lower in plant-based milks, among all plant-based milk, soy and pea-based milks were more likely to have higher protein contents, similar to cow's milk. So the key appears to be choosing the right plant-based milk that is fortified with the listed amount of calcium and vitamin D. And in terms of protein and other vitamins and minerals from milk, they may also be substituted with the right amount of leafy greens and seeds. Now, from the nutritional content standpoint, cow's milk is hard to beat by plant-based milk. However, these studies fail to pinpoint the source of cow's milk. Now, cows, like all mammals, Do not just randomly produce milk every day because it uses a lot of energy, and the cow's body also needs specific lactation hormones to stimulate milk production. Now, so in order for cows to consistently produce milk, dairy cows are subjected to continuous pregnancy through artificial insemination. 
that calves uh, are also separated from their mothers shortly after and have been criticized for causing stress and distress to both cows and calves. Now, there is an array of issue with animal welfare, and although it has been improved in recent years, we will just leave this topic for another discussion. Coming back to the health concerns, dairy cows also receive a regulated amount of hormones to increase milk production, such as recombinant bovine somatotropin, which is a lab-made cow growth hormone. Now notice that the US FDA approved recombinant bovine somatotropin in 1993, but its use is banned or prohibited in the EU, Canada, and some other countries. Now, a 2007 US Department of Agriculture survey found that about 17% of dairy cows were injected with recombinant bovine somatotropin. Now, currently, some dairy products also have labels as hormone-free to distinguish itself from other products. Now, the question is if this lab-made cow growth hormone is harmful to humans. The short answer is not sure. Let's break it down. A cow growth hormone is not active enough to interact with human cells, so even when ingested, it has no effect on human health. Now, the concerns about potential human health consequences are particularly related to the hormone IGF-1, which can be present at higher levels in milk from cows treated with growth hormone. IGF-1 has been linked in some studies to an increased risk of certain types of cancers, such as breast and prostate cancer. However, the evidence is not entirely conclusive. Some research suggests that high level of IGF-1 may contribute to cancer risk, while other studies have found no significant association or a protective effect from dairy consumption on cancer risk. Notably, the pasteurization process does not remove or inactivate IGF-1 in the milk. So, raw milk or not, in this case, is the same. Now, there is still a lack of conclusive answers on how IGF-1 in milk affects human gut bacteria. That is an area need more research. Now, unlike drug studies, Dietary and nutritional studies are harder to conduct due to a lack of funding, and they often require many years to see a true definitive effect. However, another concern is proven that cow growth hormone increases mastitis or inflammation of the breast tissue in dairy cows and leads to an increased use of antibiotics to treat the condition. This process does increase the development of antibiotic resistance bacteria. Now, so while milk is nutritious, the milk we are drinking today in the US is not the same milk our parents or grandparents drink in the past. Only time will tell how this new milk may impact our overall health. So what is driving this continued push of milk consumption? Like everything in this world, it always follows the money. Now, the dairy industry is a significant sector globally. Its vast infrastructure, which involves milk production, processing, and distribution, connects the economies of many countries. This infrastructure supports millions of jobs and contributes extensively to national economies. For instance, the American dairy industry alone generates over $794 billion in economic impact and supports more than 3.2 million jobs. 
Globally, the dairy sector produces 881 million tons of milk annually, supporting the incomes of hundreds of millions of households worldwide. In New Zealand, for example, the dairy industry is crucial as a major export sector, generating significant export revenue. In the U.S., the Federal Milk Marketing Orders, or the FMMOS, established by the Agricultural Marketing Agreement Act of 1937, help stabilize milk prices and establish orderly marketing conditions, benefiting both dairy farmers and consumers, supposedly. These orders set minimum milk prices that processors must pay to dairy farmers. Now, these prices uh, vary by region and are adjusted monthly based on dairy uh, commodity market prices. The government also directly supports the dairy industry through programs like the Dairy Price Supporting Program. The program purchases surplus dairy products to set minimum prices for milk. Now, more recently, the Dairy Margin uh, Coverage a DMC program established by the Agriculture Improvement Act of 2018 offers further financial protection to dairy producers against income loss when milk prices fall below a certain threshold. On the demand side, we've seen it. The USDA highly encourages people to consume three cups of dairy products each day. So you see how the US government is deeply involved in the demand, supply, and pricing of dairy products in this country. At the end of the day, dairy products are nutritious by nature, supporting bone health and other vital physiological functions. That its production has shifted drastically in recent decades to sustain not only the growing global population, but also a major part of economic structure. Now, whether you are a cow milk drinker or a plant-based milk drinker, I highly encourage everyone following this channel to make informed decisions about their health choices, and I'm here to provide the message for you to make that decision. So next time you hear that you need to drink milk to stay healthy, take a moment to think about where that message comes from and whether there might be alternatives that better meet your needs and values. That is all for today. Thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you again in my next video. Take good care. Bye.